Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dan, and so this is the second video I have of using uh, Fusion 360 for simple circuit design. So the first video, we just used this SPICE simulation built into uh, Fusion 360 in order to just evaluate a simple um, filter circuit. And so this uh, video, I want to like expand a little bit on that. We're going to make a circuit that not only we could do a simulation on, but that we could build a PCB board for. And so I'm going to start pretty simple. Um, normally my first project in BME 214L where I help students learn how to solder is we just make a little LED flashlight. Okay, so I just want to make an LED circuit with you guys um, that we're going to simulate it running and then we're going to show what it would look like on the PCB board. So again, to start this off, we're going to go to a new electronics design. And again, uh, this is like currently untitled, so we're just going to start off by saving it so that we give it a title. Okay, I'm going to, it's going to, I'm going to keep it in my same like simple electronics uh, folder, and I'll call this. So I do have my low pass filter files in there. So, so remember, I, I told you like it's sometimes it's hard to tell what these are, right? There's two files with the same name, but one is a design that's this one with this angled icon, and one is a schematic with this square icon. So again, just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to call this LED circuit. Okay, and now I'm going to create a schematic with that. Okay, and I could go ahead and save this to start, but I'm just going to hold off until we get some parts on there. Again, I've done most of the, the work for you guys and kept everything we need in the battery or in the library. Um, and so this is, you know, this is going to be fairly useful. Um, so I've put a battery in there. Now this was, I'll just tell you some background, right? I actually copied the um, voltage source from the SPICE library so that we could use this as a voltage source to simulate. But I also gave it like a correct battery symbol and a 3D model of the battery holder that we use um, for this uh, flashlight when we build them and solder them in class when we're in person. So this is what I've done with this battery. So I'm going to say, OK. We're going to stick this part just kind of here. And I'll hit OK. And now I want to go ahead and add uh, the other parts I need. And so we're obviously going to need a ground. Um, all the circuits that we're going to simulate need some sort of ground. So I'm going to put the ground kind of over here. Uh, I'm going to add an LED, right? The flashlight has an LED. Again, this was a SPICE uh, LED model that I went ahead and added uh, the 3D models for. Okay, and so this is where you do have to be a little bit Careful if you want a nice schematic, uh, thinking about how an LED works. Um, and so the, you have to know where the cathode and the anode are. And so in this case, the cathode's where that vertical line is. So that's what we want to connect to the negative side of the battery. And we would connect the, basically the base of the triangle to the positive side of the battery, right? So this is, a, this is the right orientation. Like I might have to be careful, like I could also connect it that way, um, but sometimes you might have to flip it around to get it in the right orientation. But I'm currently in a good orientation. And the other thing we uh, put in an LED circuit is a resistor. Like theoretically, you don't need one in there. Um, you could turn on your LED by just hooking it up to a battery, but without a resistor, it will draw too much current and your LED light will go out pretty quickly. So I'm gonna add just a resistor Again, from from what I my own parts library, I'm going to add it down here on this side, and now we just connect them together. So this is, you know, it's a, again a very simple circuit. I'm going to make that bend just right. Okay, so we've connected everything together, right? It's just battery powering uh, the LED and the resistors there to, to limit current. Okay, so now the only thing we have to do is set like the voltage for the battery and set the resistance for the resistor. 
And so normally when I build these in lab, we go ahead and oops, I gotta left click on this to bring up the, uh oh. So I, this is what happens. I'm like, I was trying to scroll down using the scroll bar. So I hit the scroll thing on my mouse, but I was over this angle, right? And so this is how you can change the angle. Um, I want it at zero, so I'm scrolling back to zero. And now when I scroll, I actually have to bring it over here to scroll. And so the value of my resistor, I'm just gonna give it as 100 ohms. Okay, that should be good enough. I'm just gonna make sure it did that. No, it didn't like it, it didn't accept it. 100, enter. Okay, I had to hit enter in order to, for it to accept 100. And now I wanna set up uh, my voltage, right? So my battery. Uh, again, this is all the information about it. I could give it a certain amount of value here by just typing like three volts or something like that. Uh, that would be fine. I could also right click in analog source setup uh, and just type it in there if I wanted. So this is just a battery. So it is just a DC value. It's not transient. It's not AC at all. Um, but we have our, our, our stuff set up now. Okay. Now, uh, before we run this, or before we actually build a PCB based on this, right? We want to go ahead and we want to uh, simulate it to make sure it's going to work. Now you're like, this is a very simple simulation. Is it just going to light? Yeah, but there's some things we could learn, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a a voltage probe here. Hit OK, just so we can see what what's going on at the, that voltage. Uh, how much voltage drop we're getting. Uh, and I hit simulate. And so this is where we'd use the operating point simulation, right? We hit simulate. Okay, and this is the, the important thing I want you guys to look at here is, so we get our voltage. So the battery's three volts, okay? We get our, our voltage drop at our point here. Um, so we're seeing that most of that voltage drop is occurring over the resistor. Um, but we also get a current, right? And I'm not sure why it's negative, to be honest. Current is current. Uh, it just might have something to do with the orientation of my circuit. Um, but anyway, it's 2.2 times 10 in the negative second. So that's that ends up being 22 milliamps of current. Okay, and this is actually important to learn. This is why we would simulate this. Because most LEDs are rated for about 20 milliamps of current. Okay, so the fact that we have 22 milliamps of current means we're shortening the life of the LED. Uh, and so what I would have to do, I'm going to close out my simulation. I'm going to change my value of my resistor. I'll make it a little bit higher. I'll make it uh, 120 ohms. Okay, now I'll re-simulate this. And now my uh, current is down, you know, 18, 19 volts. And so that's good. That helped us design the resistor we wanted to use for this. You want to give it as much current as you can because current equals brightness of the LED, but you don't want to go over that 20 amps because that would burn out the LED. Okay, so we actually used the simulation to design it, which I think is pretty cool. Now we want to like actually make it into a, a circuit board, like a PCB, right? And so there is uh, some videos online of like how you can make your PCB in like the normal fusion by drawing a sketch and then making it into a PCB. I'm going to kind of skip that step in the interest of time. Uh, you know, I would encourage you to do that for things that you design because you know a certain board size you need. Um, if you just make a PCB, it will start with something that's just too big, um, but that's okay. Like, we're, as I said, I just want to kind of show you this. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to save this. It's going to ask what I'm going to want to save it as. So this is my schematic. Um, I'll call this thing LED circuit. LED circuit schematic, right? I still have my LED circuit design, which now has a schematic in it associated with it. Okay, so there's a couple different things we could do when we get when to get to the PCB. One of the things we could just go switch to PCB view. The other thing we could go is go ahead and create a new PCB from here, right? So either works totally fine. So I'll just go ahead and switch to PCB. 
Okay, now what happens in a PCB, we have like our blank black template, which is, again, it's too big because we didn't bother designing it. And then it puts our components that we want to put on the PCB over here. And so now I just need to place these wherever I want. So again, I have to grab the plus sign in here. Okay, I'm going to drag it over there. The plus sign. Drag this LED and then drag the resistor. Right, and I can kind of see these are... Um, these traces that we're showing aren't really like the breadboard routing. It's really just, these are what are just kind of like showing us where the connections are. And so this helps me see if I need to like rotate or do anything. So, you know, why I have that selected, if I want to rotate it, you know, you could, you could choose the rotate, right? And so I can rotate it 90 degrees. If I keep clicking on it, oops. Oh no, hold on. I think I just clicked on just the text to rotate just the text there. Uh, right, so it depends which thing you click on as to where it rotates, right? And so that text rotation that I did is right there. Uh, so you have to click on the plus that's with the resistor to rotate, right? I could also just rotate my text as well, right? But I can make sure I get this in a decent orientation, like either that one or this orientation, wires are not crossing, right? So either is, is probably fine. I'll stick it in this one. I'm gonna also move this a little bit. Okay, just to, just to kind of line things up. Again, you can mess around with this and place components wherever you want. Um, but now we're kind of, we're there, right? And so now all you have to do is do the routing. Um, and so we can do quick routing. Usually this is what you would do on a complex circuit, right? Is, is just do an auto route. Um, and that, that's a way that Fusion 360 designs your quickest routes for your traces. Um, and so you're gonna, it's gonna ask, do you want to route on any of these layers? Which layers do you wanna do the routing? And for this case, I'm gonna just have all the routing happen on the bottom of the board. Okay, so I'm gonna select NA for top, and I just want all the routing on the bottom of the board because our components, were soldering them through the board, and so then we want our routes on the bottom. So I hit continue. It's going to go and hit start on this auto route thing. It go ahead and figures out the best way to do it, which obviously doesn't take a lot of thought, but some more complicated circuits will. Okay, and I can hit end job. And so we can see our that it's made our routes. Okay, I do want to point out, right, like now we're getting new uh, icons up here. So this is a PCD document. It's called LED Circuit Schematic because um, I named it the schematic. Uh, so I'm going to save this thing. I guess I could change the name of this to the PCB. And so now I have my schematic, I have my PCB, right? And if I go to my design, I have both of them in here. Both the schematic and PCB are part of my design. And now the last thing we wanna do is actually look at the 3D PCB. Right, and so this brings us into like the SolidWorks a model and we can now see what it looks like right it has our components from the libraries that we did it has our uh this is where the etched in routing is right so we have the things that we solder in here here are our components coming through the board and the battery holder coming through the board where we'd solder them in and then it has the routes for us and then we have our uh our components on top and so we could actually if we wanted we could order this pcb we could have it made for us um where it would print the silk screen, even, you know, the names, it would silk screen the names and all the text on one side. It would, you know, put the routes on the other side, drill the holes in it for us, and then all we'd have to do is install components. This is how you design a circuit in Fusion 360.